man. Let me show you how to deal with that nagging shoulder pain so that you can get back to your squat gains. Dr. Craig Lindell here from The Prehab Guys. If you're enjoying these YouTube videos, please give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that. Also comment what you wanna watch next. But in the meantime, you're here today to learn about shoulder pain with back squatting. So I got Mike here, he's gonna be my demo today. Didn't give him a heads up of anything. It's always more fun when Arash and Mike have no idea what I'm gonna take them through. But we're gonna be talking about shoulder pain with back squats. So Mike, let's get into the back squat position under a bar. The first thing that we're gonna cover in this video is just what position do we need to be in in the back squat? So let's bring the camera around this way. And if we take a look, we have to get our shoulder into this position. Mike, let's come out from under the bar and I want you to just get your shoulder into that same position. So basically, from a physiologic motion standpoint, it's gonna be abduction, it's gonna be horizontal abduction, and this external rotation. Typically, it's that rotation that gets people into trouble. So now, Mike, just do a few reps with the back squat, and then what we'll do is we'll watch how that shoulder, does it change at all while he's back squatting? Maybe if he leans forward, so Mike's keeping his chest up, but Mike, you can do a little bit more where it's like a hip hinge, you're pushing your butt back, you gotta lean forward. Even if you're doing like a low bar, okay, now you even need more of that position and your body is having to support that bar. So let's come back from it. And now let's talk about what do you do if you're dealing with shoulder pain with back squatting? So the first thing is first is you need to just assess your motion. And the easiest way to do that is because we're gonna be talking about back squatting, is just get into this little bit of a hip hinge and Mike, get into a little bit of a 90-90 shoulder position in the hip hinge. So with a camera angle from this side here, we can get a real clear angle of how much motion does Mike have side to side. Mike is actually pretty good, but yeah, Mike, really exaggerate that rotation side to side. Do you feel like one side you have a little bit more versus the other? Sure Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right so not too uncommon where we're gonna end up having a little bit more external rotation on our dominant arm side compared to our opposite arm. And for the most part, typically not an issue for some people, but if we see big changes side to side, here, Mike's pretty good. Okay, maybe a little bit more on that right side, but okay, say that you go to do this, it looks fine, you're not too worried about it. What if you can't hold that position? Mike, let's do this. Let's come to this wall over here and let's do a modified test. Al, we'll have you bring the camera around this way. And Mike, get set up or you get your back against the wall and lower on down, get your low back flat. Maybe even use this wall here so that your upper body can be a little bit more supported. Here's a modified version, how to do this test. So same thing, let's bring that arm up and then look at your rotation there, perfect. So because Mike here is using the wall and that's helping to keep his back flat, we're not compensating from the back. We're looking at pure rotation here and he's able to get his hands all the way back. So ideally we're using a flat wall, but okay, that's two ways to assess this stuff. Now we can come away from the wall. Let's talk about this shoulder pain in general. For some people, maybe you feel it in the front. For some people, maybe you feel it on the top or in the back. If we're thinking, uh, if we're talking about anything limited in the front, maybe it's some soft tissue restrictions, maybe it's your pecs, uh, maybe it's the capsule, you name it, right? So with that being said, okay, we need to attack those structures. So now we're gonna move on over here. If you're using a squat rig, Mike, let's have you get under in there. The easiest thing that you can do is just take advantage of the equipment that's around you. And Mike, let's use this rig right here. Let's just do a solid little pec stretch. So Mike can use this. Ideally, he's just getting a good pec stretch through here. We don't wanna be feeling that same pain or that same discomfort that you're feeling with the back squat. And like basically Mike is keeping that shoulder back. So what can happen is sometimes when we go to get into this position, our shoulder can just shoot forward. And that's what we're trying to limit, trying to work on this position. So Mike's doing a really good job of demonstrating this. And now we wanna follow this up with some activation to even increase that range and make this stuff stick. So Mike, let's get your hand back up there. And Al, let's come back around this way. So Mike, 
do some like pale rails where you just lift off exactly perfect. So after you've held that stretch for a little while, now what you wanna do is you actually wanna do this little lift off movement because now you're working all the muscles in the back of your shoulder to help with improving that rotation so that you can tolerate this position. So that's one. All right, what if you're back squatting without a rig? Let's go to a wall. Let's come back to, uh, let's hit this wall here again. Like you'll just have to be to the side, but let's get into that modified position for the assessment. And then let's just do some wall angels right there. Perfect. So say that you went to assess your motion, feels stiff, feels tight. Well, we're gonna treat it in the same exact position that we assessed it. So Mike here is doing a good job. You're basically scraping the wall. And then Mike, what are you feeling? What's working? What's getting stretched? Getting all my back muscles working, feeling a stretch kind of the chest region. Nice. For me, especially down here. Cool. So this is a really good one to follow up with. Both of these movements, we're talking maybe two, three minutes tops that you need to do. Last but not least, so we talked about maybe some issues in the front of the shoulder, but what if we're feeling stuff in the top? What if we're feeling stuff in the back? What if we go to rotate and we're not keeping our shoulder on a swivel? Things are sort of moving all around the place. Mike, let's do like some PICR stuff on the ground. Perfect. So Mike is being a great demo. He's just reading my mind. He knows exactly what I want. Let's get the camera angle. We can get that angle, but let's get this one here. So Mike, let's put your left hand on top of your right shoulder. Perfect. Now, what I want you to do is just practice rotating your hand down, go as far as you can. And that left hand is giving you feedback for keeping your shoulder still. Perfect. And now you can go the other way too. So what we're doing is we're working on joint centration. We're trying to keep that head of the humerus, that golf ball on the T, on the glenoid. Mike is doing a really good job of this. Mike, do a really bad job. Take your hand away and just let your shoulder move all around. Yeah, actually keeping your hand there is gonna show. So when you're sloppy with this, the shoulder is gonna be lifting up off the ground. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So this is a really good like stability exercise to just work on keeping that golf ball on the tee. Say that we want to make it a little bit harder and get your core involved with it, which can help with joint centration. Mike, let's pick our feet up, perfect. So getting those knees up in the air, keeping his abs tight, that's activating everything from below, which we know can help with shoulder activation stuff and keeping that shoulder in the right place. Perfect. All right, Mike, let's go back and reassess. Let's back squat, because I know that shoulder is gonna be feeling really good with this stuff. So we're talking maybe five minutes tops. What you need to do before back squatting all the time, Mike, just rep out some back squats here. But you can do this before back squatting. You can do this daily, maybe a couple of times a day to work on your range of motion. I'm gonna let Mike get a little pump in here. You can stop whenever you want, Mike. But how does your shoulder, how do both of your shoulders feel, or especially the one that you stretched on that side? It just helps to open up that shoulder, honestly. You only have to spend a few minutes, like I said, and then ultimately, hopefully it feels better. But what if it doesn't feel better? Then you have alternatives, right? This is why not every single person is designed to back squat. You can go to a front squat. You can go to a goblet squat. You can use safety bars. Don't force something, especially if you had an old surgery, an old injury, or your shoulder is just stiffening up and you don't have that range of motion. Stay away from low bar, maybe do a little bit more high bar because that low bar is even more demanding. But otherwise you have options, don't force it, but try this stuff out. And if you're young, you're active, you don't have any previous injury or surgery history, this should work well for you. Uh, all right, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like I said, please give us a thumbs up, comment, Give us ideas, give us topics, give us feedback. Subscribe, like, let us know what you want us to film. Cool. Until next time.